Hello friends, I'm Dave Layton and thank you for uh, joining me again in this Bible study of our uh, 12 original apostles. Uh, again, we've entitled this 12 Were Chosen, a study of the original apostles. We've had an introductory lesson in which we talked about what an apostle is, what a disciple is, the difference between the two, how our Lord selected these men, uh, what these men had to overcome, and of course what we learned from them. And that's going to be kind of the pattern as we go through. We're going to uh, take a look in this particular lesson now, starting with the 12 men. We're going to start with Peter, uh, first among the 12. And we're going to be taking a look uh, at some specific things about him and what we learn. It's fascinating. Uh, I think of all the apostles, when we, we ask the question, which apostle do you most identify with? Uh, it's fascinating that so many people identify with Peter. And, and I, 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 at times, I think we all do. Uh, there's things that the other apostles bring to the table as well. And uh, maybe you identify with one of the others. But it's just remarkable to me how many people say, you know, I, I kind of feel like Peter at times. Well, as I, as I was pre preparing and prepping and studying, reading uh, all of the different material that I could get a hold of about the different apostles, uh, I, I really enjoy what one author uh, called Peter. He referred to Peter as the apostle with the foot-shaped mouth. Another writer referred to Peter as the first rock star, a little bit of a play on his name. But we know that Peter certainly had some interesting characteristics. Uh, I, I think that's a bit of an understatement. Uh, sometimes they're seen from a negative view, but I, I kind of like to emphasize more of a positive view of Peter. Our Lord selected him for a reason. Uh, like the rest of them, he had a lot of potential, a lot of the raw materials to be what he wanted to be. But pa Peter just had that ability sometimes to say the right thing at the right time, sometimes the wrong thing at the wrong time. But he, 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 he could be called Peter, the apostle who became all he could be. And, and so it's fascinating. Take a look at Peter, where he was, and then what he became. So a lot of us do empathize with Peter. We see him in many of uh, our own character traits or perhaps those that we wished that we could have, uh, sometimes wish we didn't have. Uh, I, again, I, I think that's a positive view since, since uh, Peter can certainly give us an example of following Jesus, allowing Jesus to shape him, uh, become uh, who God wants us to be. And Peter certainly became first in many ways. All right, well, during this particular presentation, we're, we're going to look at what Scripture teaches us about Peter. Uh, there's, uh, like, like so much, there, there's a tremendous amount of information outside of Scripture, but sometimes that information is misleading. Sometimes it's, it's uh, false information or conflicting information. So let's talk about what Scripture says. Uh, God has given us that information to teach us, to help us grow. So let's look at what Scripture says about Peter. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch every now and then perhaps on something outside of Scripture, but mostly we're going to be looking, what is the information on Peter from Scripture? And then we're going to talk about what we learn from Peter. Again, this is going to be the pattern that we'll follow with all of these men as we study them. Well, certainly what we know from Peter comes from Scripture, starting with his name. So let's talk about that now. Peter's name uh, was originally Simon. Uh, we see him referred to as Simon Barjona, uh, son of Jonah, son of John, uh, I think is what it really means. But in, in John chapter 1, verse 42, Jesus changes his name to Peter, which means rock. So sometimes we see Peter referred to as Simon or Simon Peter, uh, sometimes Simeon. We also see him as Cephas. Same man, different names. Uh, have you ever been called by different names? Uh, we we kind of jokingly talk about our moms would call us by our first name. And then if we were called by our first and middle name, uh, we were in trouble. And if we were called by our first, middle, and last name, uh, we better watch out. We are really in trouble. But we see Peter and, and some of the others that are called by different names. It was a common practice. Well, we read in Scripture that Peter lived in Capernaum. Uh, he uh, worked as a fisherman. 
uh, with his brother Andrew and two others uh, who also became apostles, James and John. Uh, we, we know very little about Peter's family. Uh, we do know that uh, he had a wife and a mother-in-law in Matthew chapter 8, uh, starting in verse 14. Well, 14 and 15, we read that uh, Jesus actually healed Peter's mother-in-law. Uh, she was suffering from a fever and, and uh, he healed her and she got up and served. That's fascinating as well. So again, that's, that's uh, uh, what we know about Peter as a person, his name and where he lived, what he did, and uh, just touching there about his family. So there's many events in Scripture, though, as we read in the Gospels and in uh, the book of Acts, uh, that uh, Peter uh, was very much involved in, in everything within Scripture, uh, specifically and generally. And so I want to look at some of the events that shaped Peter uh, to become first among the apostles. Uh, in this series of lessons, I, I'm just not going to be able to cover everything about Peter, but I do want to look at some, some things that teach us about Peter and then later what we can learn from him. So let's start with some key events in Peter's life. Uh, Peter was among the first disciples that was called. In Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 18, we read where Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and called Peter and his brother Andrew to follow him. Uh, note that in the narrative, uh, they immediately left their work and followed him. Uh, there are some slight variations in, in the different accounts of Peter's calling uh, about some information about him and Andrew. Uh, we're going to study Andrew and, and how he originally brought Peter to Jesus. Uh, but, but Andrew and Peter were fishing and Jesus called them to become disciples. We can read more about this in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, uh, Mark 1, 16 through 20, and John 1, 35 through 42. But again, the, the, the narrative shows us that Peter <clears throat> was among the first that was called to be a disciple. And then later, of course, was chosen to be an apostle. And I, I've stated that Peter was first uh, among the apostles. Uh, he, he took on that leadership role, uh, as we see so many times throughout Scripture. A second event that happened in the life of Peter was, was when he gave a correct answer in Matthew 16. This is one of my favorite events uh, that happened in the life of Peter. Uh, Jesus had asked the apostles who men were saying, who the people were saying that he was. Uh, they replied uh, collectively. We don't know who spoke up specifically, but they said John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He then asked them a more direct question of who they thought that he was. And we know that Peter quickly speaks up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, Peter's reply very much pleased Jesus. Uh, Jesus then informs Peter that those words were not his own, but that it, it was God himself who revealed Christ's true identity to him. I, I, I really like that statement. Uh, this was a divinely inspired response. It clearly showed Peter's faith. And Jesus continues with the statement, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Again, as I said, Jesus is speaking specifically to Peter, but then he begins speaking collectively to uh, the uh, apostles themselves. Peter provided the answer and he facilitates the discussion. Uh, these words were addressed to the apostles as a group, however about giving the keys to the kingdom. And that's a little bit of a misunderstanding sometimes. People have an image of Peter as the gatekeeper in, in heaven, and, and that's just a misconception there. Well, in their role as leaders among the apostles, we do see Peter taking important steps in carrying out the Lord's directive to take the gospel to the world. And we know that a key locks and a key unlocks. And so that's what we see uh, through the life of Peter uh, we see that he was first to unlock or to reveal God's plan for salvation as it's carried out in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 2 at Pentecost, uh, all of the apostles were there. They all were speaking, but Peter stands up among them and delivers the message of Acts chapter 2 of the day of Pentecost. Pentecost. 
And then we see uh, in Acts chapter 8, uh, as Peter and John uh, uh, deliver the, the uh, gospel to the Samaritans. We see in Acts chapter 10, it's Peter who goes to Cornelius to reveal the gospel then to the uh, uh, non-Jews, to the Gentiles. I, I, I want to deviate just a little bit right here and, and point something out. You know, the Gospels teach us who Jesus is. They teach us about the ministry of Jesus, and, and they teach us uh, the theology of Jesus, uh, you know, the teachings of Jesus that the apostles uh, continue to carry out and that we carry out today. But there's something uh, else that happens as, as, <clears throat> excuse me, as the Gospels close and, and again, Peter delivers the sermon at Pentecost in the book of Acts. You see then the church being established and then the church growing and spreading throughout the world. Well, go back to what I was just saying. We have Acts chapter 2. Peter speaks up at Pentecost. We have the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8. We have Acts chapter 10 of, of, of uh, converting the first non-Jews. That's the pattern that Jesus gave the apostles in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. They were to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to all the world. And that's what we see happening as, as Peter and the others go out. So Peter speaks first at Pentecost. He speaks with the Samaritans, teaching them the gospel, and then Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. So we see the gospel moving out. So it follows that pattern. But Peter had the uh, honor, the blessing, uh, maybe just part of his personality. He was the one that would speak up. He was the leader of the group. So again, key, Peter, uh, key, key events in Peter's life, he was first among, or among the first that was called in, in Matthew 4.18. Uh, he provides the correct answer to who Jesus was in Matthew chapter 16 that facilitated that discussion then. And, and we see there that apostolic authority being granted. Uh, uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, locking and unlocking. All right, and then a, a third event I want to look at uh, that was an iconic moment in P Peter's life and, and, and very much changed Peter was Peter's denial of Christ and then the subsequent reinstatement of Peter that, that Jesus granted him. In Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 31, uh, Jesus tells Peter that he's going to deny him uh, even as Peter had declared that he's ready to go to prison or even death for him. And we know as we study Peter through the book of Acts, that's exactly what happened. Peter went to prison. Peter uh, was willing to go to his death. Uh, in Luke chapter 22, in verse 54, uh, we then read how Peter denied Jesus. He denied Jesus three times, just as Jesus said he would. But then we see in John chapter 21 in verse 15 that Peter uh, is, is sitting with Jesus after his resurrection. Jesus now is bringing Peter back. He's reinstating Peter. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loves him, to which Peter strongly declares, you know that I love you. He said that three times. Well, that event was not lost on Peter as he would spend the rest of his life completely being dedicated to Jesus. He understood that uh, he had denied Jesus three times. Jesus now asked him three times, if you love me. And then as that narrative concludes, Jesus makes the statement, follow me. And, and so we have at the beginning of Peter's life, when Jesus or Peter's uh, uh, discipleship, Jesus said, follow me. And now we have it again, Jesus saying, follow me. So Peter is now fully restored as an apostle. I don't know that Jesus ever considered him not to be, but in Peter's mind, he needed to be restored. And Jesus does that for him. So uh, we, we see that happening in Peter, the, the uh, denial of Christ and then his reinstatement. That changed Peter for the rest of his life. Peter would never again uh, deviate in his commitment to our Lord. Peter had to grow, just like all of the apostles, just like us today. Uh, but Peter, from that moment on, was fully engaged, fully dedicated to serving the Lord.
Well, I'd like to spend a few minutes now talking about what we learned from Peter. As I said, there's so many other things in Scripture that talk about Peter, but I wanted to look at these three events. But I also want to spend some time now talking about what is it we learn from Peter. Uh, there, there's just so much. And, and uh, I, I like to look at Peter as a seeker. A seeker uh, is, is someone who's looking to discover God's will for their life. And that certainly is what Peter would do. Peter asked a lot of questions. I think uh, we have more recorded questions by Peter than any of the apostles combined. Peter was seeking greater understanding. Peter uh, wanted to know, and, and so he was seeking. <clears throat> Peter's usually uh, the, the one who asked the Lord to explain difficult statements. You, for example, Matthew 15, 15 and Luke 12, 41. Uh, Peter not only asked a lot of questions, but he also was the first who answered questions posted by Christ. Again, uh, I use the example from Peter's life where he gave the right answer, who do men say that I am? Uh, who do you say that I am? Uh, Peter spoke up while the others were kind of processing the question in their mind. And so I learned from that that I must also seek to become a follower of Jesus and then continue to follow Jesus, continue to discover more and more about Jesus. So I learned from Peter, and we all learn from Peter, uh, what it means to be a seeker. We have a seeker who is outside of, of our Lord, uh, somebody who doesn't understand, uh, and then when somebody obeys our Lord and becomes a follower, a disciple of Jesus, there's now the seeking to further understand the Lord's will and the seeking to carry out that will. Uh, so we always seek to become a follower of Jesus and then how we can grow in service to the Lord, how we can carry out our mission as servants to the Master. Peter also teaches us about courage. You know, by the nature of Peter's work as a fisherman, he, he, uh, we, we read in Scripture, not only Peter, but the fishermen as a whole, uh, that was a dangerous life. Uh, they were subject to storms at sea. Uh, we, we read about the different storms and, and how uh, it, it could even cause their death. We, that's just part of the work. Uh, so Peter was courageous. But later on, he would learn uh, that it, it wasn't just a face anything in life kind of courageousness uh, to a more settled, more mature, a confident type of courage uh, where he truly was willing to suffer anything for Christ. At times he, he, he was kind of brash, of course, uh, that he was willing to die for Christ, but he would learn what that meant and it matured in him to that, that strong, that, that strength, uh, that confidence that he had. Um, you know, after delivering the keys to enter into God's kingdom at Pentecost, Peter uh, redirected courage. He began to carry the gospel into all the world and, and truly was willing to go to the death for the Lord. But we see some acts of courage in, in Peter. And, and I, I have been in situations where I, I've helped establish a new congregation of the Lord's Church and, and uh, gone out and taught people the gospel. And, and I read from Peter uh, how he had the courage to do that. It in, helps inspire me and helps inspire others as well. Let me, let me give you a few examples. Uh, Peter and John were speaking boldly before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 4. Uh, they would likely not have done that. Of course, the Holy Spirit was guiding them in that. Uh, Peter uh, was arrested in Acts chapter 5, but he continues to preach Jesus even after being threatened. Uh, Peter takes the gospel to the Samaritans, to the Gentiles, and later he defends those actions before the brethren in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 11, and of course the Jerusalem council in Acts chapter 15. Uh, in Acts chapter 12, Peter is imprisoned by Herod. And there's Peter. He's singing and praising God. So we see in Peter courage, and we can learn that courage as well. Peter is willing to follow the Lord no matter the cost. And, and God rewarded Peter for that. He gave him additional courage. He gave him the strength to carry out his will. We learn that courage as well. We may not be confident in our abilities to teach the gospel, but the more we follow Christ, the more we grow in Christ, the more confident we become, the more able we are, the more uh, it just becomes a part of who we are and what we do. And that's the way it is for Peter. Our lesson is to not hesitate 
in fulfilling our mission to bring Jesus to, uh, to others. No matter the obstacle, uh, we can overcome obstacles. We can allow God to help us overcome obstacles. Uh, our Lord's going to show us a way. We're going to find that way. Interestingly, uh, we learn humility from Peter. I, I think this is something certainly that Peter did not possess early on uh, in Peter. Uh, his, his nature was to be very confident, very aggressive, very assertive. Humility was not a character trait of Peter. And a total of the events of his calling by Christ, the tempering of his character, the events in the garden uh, as Jesus was arrested, his denial of Christ, and then his reinstatement, they all formed in Peter the humble spirit, an attitude that later gave him some insights as, as he would teach us that humility is a key characteristic. And, and uh, if we're going to be followers of Christ, we submit ourselves to the master. And so that was important for Peter to not only grow in himself, but to teach us as well. I'd like to challenge you on something uh, just for a moment, please. Uh, sometime as you're studying scripture, go, go look through all of the uh, major characters throughout scripture. A good place to start, for example, would be uh, in Hebrews 11, where we're learning about faith. And you, you look through the listing of those heroes of faith that are found in Hebrews, and you'll notice that humility was a characteristic that all of these uh, heroes of the faith possessed. They may not have had it at first, but they either started humble or they learned humility. And we learn from that, that we truly become the servants that God needs when we get ourselves out of the way. God uses us and God blesses us as we grow in that grace of humility. So like Peter, we learn that it's not all about us. It's about the master. We are the servants and our Lord is the master. Our role is to serve, humbly serve the master. We humbly submit to Jesus, and then we continue as faithful and humble servants. It's amazing that Peter is the one that teaches us by the, the, just the incredible contrast between who he was and who he became. Peter had to learn compassion, and he did, and he teaches that to us as well. From all Peter experience, uh, he was able to develop compassion. That means understanding and caring for others. He would refer to Christians as my children. For example, uh, he, he would teach us a lot about being a shepherd and, and caring for the flock. But you know, Peter had been there. Uh, he experienced the forgiveness that was taught by Christ after he had first denied him. So Peter understood compassion. He understood what it means, that understanding and caring. So he teaches us both by his life experiences and uh, he teaches us with words that we can fall and God gives us the opportunity to come back. Uh, all of us are familiar perhaps with 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 8. Uh, Peter warns us about Satan as a... <coughs> Excuse me. Peter, Peter warns us about Satan as a roaring lion uh, looking whom he can devour. Peter knew that everyone is susceptible to sin. But Peter also teaches us by what happened in his life that Jesus truly forgives us when we come back to him. So Peter understood compassion. It was not a theoretical concept for Peter. It was, it was experiential learning. Peter learned it by experience, uh, and, and we can as well. Well, let, let me uh, wrap up here a little bit. Uh, scripture doesn't record Peter's death. Uh, early Christian writers indicated that Peter was crucified, uh, in fact, crucified upside down. Uh, except as an example of being faithful no matter what, uh, including Peter's death, uh, Peter's faithful life was what was important. Uh, we have every reason to believe that Peter died faithful. Peter is credited with writing two books in the New Testament, 1 and 2 Peter. Uh, in 2 Peter 3, verse 18, I, I kind of see his life summarized 
by his statement there, these are, these are our final recorded words of Peter in, in the New Testament. Peter says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. That's Peter. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, I, I read that and, and, and I feel from that comforting words. I, I feel that not as a brash statement, but I feel it as a soft and comforting statement. And that's what Peter became. Peter went from being the apostle with the foot-shaped mouth, saying sometimes the wrong thing at the wrong time and doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, to somebody who demonstrated quiet, confident courage and faithfulness to the Lord and communicates it to us. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter didn't say, follow me because I've got the answers. He's pointed to Jesus. So that's what Peter did. Uh, he grew in the potential of his name, Rock. He became a foundational fixture of the, uh, uh, figure of the early church and continues to be foundational even today. Uh, at the same time, I see a real person, somebody we can also become like. He's an example of God's power changing lives. Uh, Peter reached his full potential. There was a lot he had to learn, a lot he had to overcome, just like us. There's a lot we have to learn, a lot we have to unlearn, and a lot we can become as we submit our lives more and more to our Lord. You know something? I, as, as, uh, as I study Peter and think about Peter, I, I, think, I think Peter would have loved to sing the song that we sing today, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have Thine Own Way. Uh, thou art the potter. I am the clay. Shape me and mold me after Thy will. I, Peter would love that song. Well, this concludes our review of Peter. Now we'll continue with uh, next the study of his brother and fellow apostle, Andrew. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this study. Friends, in all things, we give God the glory. Thank you very much.